So, after the newest LG OLED update, the firmware update of the panel is what I'm talking about here. The WebOS one that was supposed to bring new cool features, it seems that even though you did pay for a professional calibration or maybe you used my calibration, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Now the panel is green and has a push of red. You're watching Everything OLED. Make sure to press subscribe to support the channel's growth. <clears throat> okay, so some of you paid $200 for a professional calibration. Some people paid $120 for a professional calibration. It doesn't matter though, because now it's not calibrated anymore if you have an LG OLED. This is horrible, man. Holy shit. What, what kind of horrid shit is this? So, I've always been working to remove the green and red push of these panels. Now they're back again, and I'm honestly at the edge of like... LG, are you trying to edge me? Is that what you're doing? You're edging me in my bed? The Americans watching this video will be like, does he know what that means? <laughs> okay, so I fixed it, right? As good as I could. So, Hotfix 2.3, my very popular calibration that makes the panel look very natural and neutral. Now looks like this. No! Oh, you know, I wake up in the morning after the update and I see this. So, I didn't want to uh, announce this to anyone before launching the video, because if I do, people are, that have a massive OCD are not going to be able to enjoy their panels. Hopefully, none of you saw this and realized it. You probably did. Well, let's hope you didn't. But here I am. I'm going to save your ass for like the 20th time. Because every time we seem to update these TVs, something goes wrong. So this update or hotfix or whatever you want to call it, our new calibration is system wide. So this is for HDR, uh, SDR, it's for uh, HDR, SDR, Dolby Vision. Is there anything more? No, that's everything. Yeah, and it's for movies and games. So. Go into Game Optimizer for your PlayStation or PC or a movie like Cinema, Home or Vivid Mode. It's gonna be the same. I'm, I'm only going to give you the color balance settings. I'm not gonna give you any preferences or recommendations in this video. That's for other videos and those videos still stand for the recommendations. That hasn't changed. We're just gonna be dialing in the tint and white balance. So, white balance. And the first thing that we're going to change in white balance is color temperature. So the most important thing here is to put this to warm 20. Because now when we do warm 50 or warm 40, it's greener and redder than ever. It's actually not red to where you would notice it. You would have to make it colder and then it turns red. It's a little bit red underneath the green. But you wouldn't be able to see it without calibration gear. The only reason I know that it's there is because, as I said, when I make the panel colder, the, the red starts to appear on high points, so white, and on skin tones, and a little bit on this bright and grey here. So, a warm 20 is the baseline. Um, you cannot change it. Like, don't. Don't change this for anything else. You need, if you're gonna copy these settings, you need to be using warm 20. Otherwise, something else is gonna look wrong. So, warm 20. Two point calibration method, high point is what we're gonna begin with and I'm doing minus 20 on red to delete that red on skin tones that isn't supposed to be there, then I don't change anything on blue and green. We then go to low point, minus 25 on red, minus 50 on green and minus 30 on blue. Now, 22 point calibration, we're gonna go code value, we're gonna go down all the way to the bottom uh, these numbers here, 101 on the lowest on my TV, will, might be different on yours, but it doesn't have anything to do with calibration of values or increments or anything. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you're on the lowest point and then we're going to go up by one increment. So, the first increment, the lowest one, minus 10, minus 2. We're going to go up one increment. Minus 10, minus 8. Going to go up one more increment. Minus 10, minus 12. We're going to go up one more increment. Minus 10, minus 14, minus 2, and then the last increment, which on my panel is 342, but it's gonna be different on yours most likely. Uh, minus 10, minus 15, and 0, of course, we don't change the red there. That is the entire calibration. Now, when going in between 
my normal hotfix 2.3 calibration or 2.2 or 2.1 or 2.0 you're gonna notice that the old one that looked amazing now looks green compared to this newer one and uh, yeah hope you guys enjoyed leave a comment and letting me know what you think about this uh, i think it's horrible that this happened but i always try to be as transparent and as forthcoming as i can be with my viewers and i always want to be able to make sure that we don't have any weird hints and i always give this away for free so please please consider subscribing liking the video leave a comment letting me know what you think about the calibration uh, maybe you like it it looks actually very close to how i remember hotfix to 1.9 looking that was a little colder back then so i really like it i do combine this with uh, reduced blue light either on the pc or on the tv when i'm watching movies but that's my opinion you know it's like i'm not saying you need to do that you might think it looks a little too cold at times if you think that yep, just enable reduced blue light you might be used to a more green orangey tinge and that's totally fine then uh, on PC, I actually have uh, night mode or nighttime mode or night shift enabled uh, on 40%, which is really high. But I can't handle the luminosity of these panels or the luminance, sorry, of these panels. The white is the problem. It, it's not actually the brightness itself. It's how white the panel can look. It really scorches my eyes. So I have a lot of settings for that to kind of mitigate it. I can give you some tips. Uh, but for everyone else, you can leave the video, we are done. So if you have a lot of eye issues when watching an LG OLED and you're gaming, for example. So level 2 on dark room mode, you want to go into the game optimizer sub menu inside of the game bar here. This one. And you want to go to picture, you want to make sure black stabilizer is on 10. You want to make sure the white stabilizer is on plus 15. This is going to make white pop a lot less, it's going to look very plain and boring. But it isn't going to scorch your eyes anymore. The next step is to make it even less white. Now I know, man, I don't want to have an OLED and have to do all of these de degradations just to be able to manage it. It is what it is, man. If you have a lot of severe issues, then you have to take a lot of eye drops and whatnot like me. You might really be happy about these settings because I, I don't get any eye strain when I use my TV anymore with these settings. 70 on game contrast will limit how much pop there is on all colors and white luminance on the panel so everything will become more dulled down and that's really good if you have really sensitive eyes to a blinking OLED like this with a PWM so 70 and uh, these are of course uh, totally up to you now if you want a little bit more pop uh, you can do FPS mode and you can do you can do seven on black stabilizer, zero on white stabilizer, which is gonna make it more crazy with the white than default. And this, the game contrast, 70 for eye care. And if you want to go crazy with brightness, like most users will, go 100 of course. And then don't change these two. But the color depth, if you want a more serious tone or gritty tone, go 44. And I always recommend dynamic tone mapping for people with eye care, just because it kind of evens out the panel's playing field, making it more even with the brightness values. It's not going to be super dark and as super bright. Now everything is going to become super bright and then we dial it down, then it becomes more of a balanced picture framework. And I just honestly prefer it this way. Not because it looks better inherently, but just because it's easier to dial in for games. It looks more cohesive more often than not. Uh, and it is a lot easier on your eyes, which for me, a user with eye care need ability or whatever it's called, like I have to have a lot more um, restrictions on my panel. It helps me a lot. So yeah. Uh, now, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll make sure to read all the comments as always. There are a lot of commenters nowadays on my channel and I can't read all the comments, I gotta be honest. Uh, but I'm getting through them, segmentedly, like one by one. And um, I hope that I'm gonna be better at answering comments in the future. I have been really good at answering comments since the beginning, but now I get 32 to 68 comments somewhere around there a day. That's a lot of comments, man, and I don't, I don't get paid enough to answer all of those comments every single day. So I, I kind of answer three to eight comments a day, and then I kind of segment it out and I try to answer everything uh, from the oldest to the newest, and I kind of balance it out. If you're a member on the channel and you're a paying member, doesn't matter which level you're paying for, you can pay for the, the cheapest one, which is um, 
uh, 90 cents, so essentially just underneath a dollar. If you pay for that membership, uh, I get a notification on my phone when you specifically write a comment, and then I can see, okay, he has written a comment and he's a member, he's a paying member, I'm gonna be answering him faster. There's a lot of members on the channel. We have 52 members right now, so if you're becoming a member and you're expecting to get an answer instantly, know that it might still take like an hour, but instead of it taking three days, it might take an hour only. So, but hey, if you write a comment and I'm asleep, you might still be able to wait for like 18 hours, you know? So it's like, yes, I understand that I'm a human being. I'm not able to answer all these comments anymore. I am still going to, but it's gonna take time. So yeah, thank you so much. I love you guys so much. Uh, and I hope that this hot fix helps you out to not get any weird tints or hues on your panel. Because I feel like we don't necessarily deserve to have that on such old panels. So now, should look really good. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys.